Hello and welcome to our video tutorial on how to analyze an EKG rhythm in six simple steps. An EKG, or ECG electrocardiogram, is a non-invasive test that measures the electrical activity of the heart. Analyzing an EKG rhythm is an important skill for healthcare professionals, as it can help diagnose various cardiac conditions. In this video, we will be discussing six steps to help you analyze an EKG rhythm. Please check out the links in the description to more detailed video explanations of the first five steps of EKG rhythm analysis. Let's start the analysis of an EKG strip. To have an accurate analysis of a 12-lead EKG, we have to look at the rhythm strip, which is usually lead 2. Alternatively, we can use lead 2 if we have at least 6 seconds of EKG tracing. Step 1. Assess the rhythm. The first step is to assess the rhythm. Determine if the rhythm is regular or irregular. Look for patterns in the timing of the QRS complexes. An EKG rhythm is considered regular if the time intervals between consecutive QRS complexes are consistent. To measure the regularity of an EKG rhythm, you can measure the R to R intervals on an EKG strip using a ruler or caliper. If the R to R intervals are consistent, then the rhythm is considered regular. Step 2. Determine the heart rate. The first method to determine the rate is called the 6-second method. The first step of this method is to choose a 6-second interval on the EKG tracing. To determine the 6-second interval, you need to count 30 large boxes or 150 small boxes on your EKG paper. These arrows point the boundaries of 6 seconds on this EKG strip. The next step is to count the number of QRS complexes the main deflection on the EKG trace within that interval. Once you have counted the number of QRS complexes within the 6 second interval, you multiply that number by 10 to obtain the heart rate in BPM. So in this example, there are 10 QRS complexes in this 6 second strip. 10 times 10 equals 100. Therefore this strip is 100 beats per minute. This provides an estimation of the heart rate, which is expressed as beats per minute, BPM. It's important to note that an EKG rhythm can sometimes be irregular, making it difficult to accurately determine the rate. In such cases, you may need to count the number of QRS complexes over a longer time interval, such as 12 seconds, to get a more accurate estimate of the heart rate. The 6-second method is quite advantageous compared to the other methods of rate determination in which it can be utilized for both regular and irregular rhythms. The next method of determining the heart rate on an EKG strip is called the large block or box method, which is also known as the 300 method. One large box or block is made up of 25 small boxes or blocks. As you can see in this illustration, one large box or block is five small boxes tall and five small boxes wide. You need to count the number of large boxes or blocks between two QRS complexes. Then you divide 300 by the number of large boxes or blocks to obtain your heart rate. In this example, we count three large boxes between two QRS complexes as indicated by the arrows. We then divide 300 by three large boxes and we get 100. Therefore, the heart rate in this strip is 100 beats per minute. The 300 method can only be used on regular rhythms and not on irregular rhythms. The third method of determining the heart rate is called the small box or block method, also known as the 1500 method. Let's do the 1500 method on this familiar EKG strip. We did the 300 method on this same strip earlier and we got a heart rate of 100 beats per minute. We mark two successive QRS complexes, as shown here with arrows. We then count the number of small boxes or blocks between these two QRS complexes. To calculate the heart rate, we divide 1500 by the total number of small boxes between the two QRS complexes. In this example, it will be 1500 divided by 15 and a half. This gives us a heart rate of 96.8 or round it up to 97 beats per minute. This is close to the 100 beats per minute we got from the 300 method. Just like the 300 method, 
the 1500 method can only be used on regular rhythms, but not on irregular rhythms. Step 3. Identify the P wave. P waves are a type of waveform that can be observed on an electrocardiogram ECG or EKG strip. It is the first positive wave that appears on your EKG tracing of a heartbeat. They represent the electrical activity that occurs in the atria of the heart during a cardiac cycle. We can say that the P wave represents the time at which the two atria of the heart are contracting, pushing blood into the two bottom ventricles. On an EKG strip, P waves typically appear as small, rounded, and upright deflections that precede the QRS complex. The amplitude, duration, and shape of P waves can provide valuable information about the underlying cardiac rhythm and the health of the heart. Normal P waves typically have a duration of less than 0.12 seconds, or less than 3 small squares, and an amplitude of less than 2.5 mm, or less than 2.5 small squares. They are usually upright in leads 1, 2, and AVF, but may be inverted in AVR. Abnormal P waves may have different shapes, amplitudes, and durations depending on the underlying condition. Abnormal P waves may indicate conditions such as atrial enlargement, atrial fibrillation, or other types of arrhythmias. For example, in atrial enlargement, the P waves may be wider, taller, or more notched than normal. In atrial fibrillation, the P waves may be absent or replaced by chaotic and irregular electrical activity. The timing of P waves is also important. In a normal sinus rhythm, P waves should be regular and occur at a consistent interval. If the P waves are irregularly spaced or show varying morphology, such as varying shapes and forms, this may indicate an arrhythmia such as atrial fibrillation or flutter. Finally, it's worth noting that P waves can be difficult to see in certain situations, such as when the heart rate is very fast or when the EKG leads are improperly placed. Step 4. Measure the PR interval. The PR interval is measured from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex. To identify the beginning of the PR interval, look for the point where the P wave begins and is followed by a flat baseline before the beginning of the QRS complex. To measure the PR interval, count the number of small squares between the beginning of the PR interval and the beginning of the QRS complex. You can use an EKG caliper to accurately count the squares. Each small square on an EKG strip represents 0.04 seconds, so multiply the number of small squares by 0.04 to get the duration of the PR interval in seconds. Place one tip of the caliper at the beginning of the P wave. Then place the other tip of the caliper at the beginning of the QRS complex. Fix the caliper arms, then move the caliper to an empty area of the EKG paper while maintaining the arms in that fixed position. Place the tips of the fixed caliper over visible small squares, and then count the number of small squares between the caliper tips. Multiply the number of small squares by 0.04, and this will give you the measurement of your PR interval in seconds. The normal range for the PR interval is between 0.12 and 0.20 seconds, or 3 to 5, small squares. Step 5. Assess the QRS complex. To measure the QRS complex, you need to locate the beginning of the Q wave and the end of the S wave. Using an EKG caliper, place one tip of the EKG caliper at the beginning of the Q wave, then place the other end of the EKG caliper at the end of the S wave, also known as the J point. If the QRS complex is missing one of the waves, here's how we measure it. For example, in the RS wave, we start the measurement here then end here. In this QS wave, we start the measurement here and end here. The QRS complex should be narrow, meaning less than 0.12 seconds or 120 milliseconds and pointed in shape, with a smooth and consistent morphology. Normal QRS complexes are narrow, or narrow means normal. Step 6. Interpret the overall rhythm. The final step is to interpret the overall rhythm. Some common rhythms include sinus rhythm, atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, supraventricular tachycardia, 
ventricular tachycardia, and ventricular fibrillation. Let us do a practice analysis on this 12-lead EKG strip by using the six steps of EKG analysis. We will be using the rhythm strip found near the bottom of the strip as indicated by this box. We will use a six-second section of the rhythm strip, which is around 30 large boxes or 150 small boxes wide, as shown in this illustration. We then count the number of QRS complexes within this six-second section, then multiply that number by 10. In this example, the first and last QRS complexes are right on the boundaries of our six-second section. So all in all, we have eight QRS complexes, multiplied by 10, makes it 80 beats per minute. We can determine that this strip is regular, based on the equal R to R intervals between each and every QRS complex. The next step is to identify and assess the P waves. In this example, all the P waves are upright, are uniform, meaning they all look alike, and there is one P wave before each and every QRS complex. The next step is to measure the PR interval. Locate the beginning of the P wave and the beginning of the QRS complex of one heartbeat or cardiac cycle. Count the number of small boxes between the beginning of the P wave and the beginning of the QRS complex. Multiply the number of small boxes by 0.04 to get the PR interval. In this example, there are four small boxes multiplied by 0.04 to get 0.16 seconds for the PR interval. We are now going to measure the QRS complex, which is the fifth step of an EKG analysis. Locate the start of the Q wave and the end of the S wave of your QRS complex. In this example, there is no S wave, so we end the measurement at the end of the R wave. In this example, we measure two and a half small boxes for our QRS complex. Multiply 2.5 by 0.04 and we get 0.10 seconds for our QRS complex. So to summarize, we have a rhythm that is regular, a heart rate of 80, P waves that are upright, they all look alike, and there is one P wave for every one QRS complex, a PR interval that is 0.16 seconds, and a QRS complex of 0.10 seconds. We are now going to do the last step, which is to finalize the analysis with an interpretation. Based on all these information, we have a normal sinus rhythm. In conclusion, analyzing an EKG rhythm can help diagnose various cardiac conditions. By following these six steps, you can systematically analyze an EKG rhythm and arrive at a diagnosis or interpretation of the cardiac rhythm. Thank you for watching our video on how to analyze an EKG rhythm. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and smash the like button.